Welcome to the Brigham Young University Family History Library webinar series. My name is Braden Knudsen and I'll be your host for this webinar today. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for another webinar. Um, we always love having everybody here. We have a couple of polls on the screen as we get started here. Um, we'd love for you to you know, let us know how you heard about today's webinar and where you're listening from. It was always really fun for everybody to see and it helps us out to kind of know who our audience is and who we're reaching and how we can improve. Um, some of the announcements we have for today. So our next webinar is titled Discover, Gather, Connect, A New Emphasis for Family History by Catherine Grant. And that will be next Friday, March 30th at 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Um, so if you have a chance, make sure you come back next Friday to see that one. Also, we've been announcing this a lot lately, but if you have not heard yet, we have a, um, a new viewing platform on our website to help for um, to help those people that get YouTube blocked at their local ward church building or their family history center. Um, this new viewing platform just allows everybody to be able to um, just, just go and watch those videos without them being blocked. And it's at this website here on the page. Um, if you go there, there's a big advertisement in the center of the screen that will take you to that page. It's still in testing, so if you have any feedback for us, let us know, and we'd love to make improvements to it. Um, so today, we'll be pleased to hear from Bob Taylor, who will be giving a presentation titled, What's New with the Family History Guide? Bob Taylor, CEO of the Family History Guide Association, has been actively doing family history for over 25 years. He has combined his passion for genealogy with his background in instructional, instructional design to produce a new learning resource for family history, the Family History Guide. Bob earned his bachelor's degree from Brigham Young University and master's degree from California State University, Los Angeles, both in music education. He has been, been a featured presenter at Roots Tech 2016 sorry, UV TAG and the BYU Family History Conference. In addition to numerous family history fairs in Utah, a career change led him to instructional design and technical writing where he has worked for large technology corporations such as Novell, Intel, and Western Digital. At Intel University, he redesigned key training courses for employees and managers worldwide, as well as teaching management courses in Washington, Arizona, Oregon, California, and Utah. He has authored many online and written learning systems, helping others accelerate learning in technology, music, and family history. Bob and his wife Susie have five daughters and six grandchildren. Um, and again, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us. And as we turn the time over to Bob and he gets things set up here, just like to remind you about our comments and questions boxes on the right-hand side of the screen. Feel free to write in with any questions, and we'll make sure that those get answered by the end. Um, Bob, feel free to go ahead and share your screen and go ahead and take it away whenever you're ready. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Um, before I launch into what's new with the Family History Guide, I thought I would just give a brief recap of Roots Tech uh, for, for the Family History Guide. It was a wonderful conference. We were located in some prime real estate uh, next to the Family Search and Ancestry and Find My Past, My Heritage booths. We got uh, at least several thousand visitors coming into the booth asking questions and getting live demos and participating in many classes. And the presentation that we gave uh, was attended by over 800 people. So all in all, it was a, a wonderful experience and we're looking forward to next year as well. Okay, so on the screen here, you can see on the left-hand side, I've put a list together of 20 different things that we'll be talking about. These are new items to the Family History Guide as of, let's say, three or four months ago. So basically, we'll just walk through all of those and uh, give you a flavor of what's new. As you already know, with the Family History Guide, our middle name is Change, basically. So we keep up with what's happening with the Family History landscape. We're always improving the site. and. We depend on um, you as well for suggestions of what you'd like to see and so forth. So let's get started. Number one is we have consolidated the top menus. So if, if I move from left to right, you can see that I'm hovering over these menus here. And in the past, we had a, a, a dual layer. We had a top and bottom 
uh, system of menus and we've consolidated those into one single line which is uh, a little more efficient and our search uh, function is right here underneath the uh, logo still takes you back to the home page so that acts as before all right uh, number two mobile friendly this is one of our biggest changes and it's uh, opened up a lot better response from people who are using mobile phones and tablets and so forth so to give a quick demonstration of this if I go to the right and I basically minimize this window a bit you'll see that the top menu disappeared and we have what we affectionately refer to as the hamburger menu um, this is the norm of what you will see on mobile devices tablets and phones and so forth so it also works uh, with narrow windows on desktops so if I click on this then I see on the left here uh, the menus are now presented vertically so I can hover over any of these and immediately I can get the drop-down choices and so forth that I would want to go to um, so very handy for mobile phones try it out your tablets and so forth that was a, a big step forward I think for what we've been able to accomplish in the family history guide then if you click the hamburger menu again you're back to the home page uh, as regular remember that is activated only on if you're on a desktop it's activated only when you have a narrower screen to work with so I'm gonna pull this back out to full size and you see that the top menus uh, appeared back like they were before okay number three video tiles this is referring to the home page so I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit here and you'll see these little video icons over the tiles um, these are new so I'm gonna click on one these go out to our YouTube channel and immediately start uh, a movie or video about a particular topic and if you haven't taken the chance to see these these are pretty cool um, our marketing and PR directors Scott and Angel Anderson invested a ton of time and and resources pulling together some really nice professionally done um, videos that are all on our YouTube channel and you can see uh, a number of them right from the home page right here okay number four donations yes we love donations uh, we're grateful for donations because as you know we don't have any advertising on the site we don't sell anything we don't have any paid subscriptions so donations are the way that we keep the company moving forward so I'll scroll down here and we're pleased to announce that we had a major donation from the Larry H and Gail Miller Family Foundation and we have another one in the works uh, from another um, company and as we gather these donations we'll be uh, posting uh, icons down at the bottom to let people know um, who our major donors are and we appreciate the single donors there here's the donate button over here on the left you're welcome to use that if you'd like to make a smaller donation as well all right we'll go back up to the beginning and number five is new brochures in the past we had the single brochure that you could download print and you could even order um, professional copies and so forth we've taken a little bit different approach now so I'll take you to the intro and I'm going to go down in the intro men menu to media click on that and if I go down a little bit further you'll see now instead of one brochure we basically have seven brochures and they are divided up into different topics the main one we have one for beginners one about activities um, our partner paths research training and LDS focus so I'm going to click on the main brochure here just to give you a flavor of what it's about and scroll down this is a PDF that you can um, print um, or view here and the first page has got overview material and you can even scan on the QR code and you can go directly to the website if you're if you have a, um, a mobile phone and so forth so these are great for doing discovery days or just spreading the word about the family history guide and on the second um, page you notice these are eight and a half by eleven pages on the second page we take a deeper dive into the content about the particular aspect so this is the main one so we have basically the main categories um, that exist in the family history guide so I'm going to 
close that window. And you're welcome to go explore through those, download. Uh, we would just ask that you not post them to other websites, but we, we want people to come to, to the website here in order to download um, and print the different brochures. Okay. That was number five. Let's go on to number six, quizzes. This is kind of a fun uh, venture that we've gotten into. Um, in training, I'm going to go down to the bottom of the training menu and show you the new quizzes page that we have. So we have quizzes for family search. Here's a couple here, family tree and memories. Quizzes for ancestry and a My Heritage quiz and Find My Past quiz. We will be adding to the uh, assortment there. Um, this is just a, a starting uh, assortment of quizzes. So I'm going to go back up to the Family Search Project 1 Family Tree just to give you a flavor of what this is about. You click it and it's pretty much an interactive quiz that you can take yourself. At the beginning you see these quiz instructions. This is a link to a web page that opens up and gives you general instructions about okay how does this thing work and what how do we score and what's a passing score and this type of thing. Um, so if I start the quiz with the start quiz button here it asks questions like uh, hmm how do I scroll I think you drag the mouse or swipe on your device that's correct I continue and so on and so forth there's uh, 20 questions some of the quizzes uh, w that, that cover less material have only 10 questions. So I'm going to close that. I'll show you additionally, you can locate a quiz inside a project. So I'm going to go to Family Search and Family Tree, the first project there. And you'll notice that we've added quiz up in the, the goals header area up here. So if I click on that, I'm going to go to the same place and it even asks me if I want to resume where I left off. I'll say no, I could go ahead and, and resume or whatever I wanted to do there. So the quizzes are available for the corresponding uh, projects uh, in the Family History Guide. Number seven, open and close. So as long as we're here on this uh, project page, uh, I can demonstrate open and close. Some of you are familiar with this, but if you're not, it's a pretty cool feature. So here we have a goal that says sign into to Family Search and so forth. Um, if I want to minimize this, now I can. I simply click on it and every goal that I click on gets minimized until I find, hmm, this is the one I want to focus on. And you can even open them back up. And if you want to open all the choices, you can do that at once or you can even close all the choices in the entire project. And this gives you a bird's eye view of all of the choices that are available in the project without having to scroll and read all of the intermediate text. And like I mentioned before, Open Choices opens them back up again, so now you have all the intermediate text there. We think that's a, a pretty cool way to offer some flexibility with what people are seeing on the screen. Okay, that was number seven. Uh, we'll move on to number eight, Partner Exercises. Um, in Family Search, we've had a lot of exercises you can click on, and they're correlated with tracker um, progress and so forth. We've done the same with Ancestry, My Heritage, and Find My Past projects now. So I'm going here to Ancestry Family Tree. I'm going to scroll down a bit, and here are some exercises. And you'll notice the good and proficient. Do this and you're good, do that and you're proficient, and these are correlated with the, the online tracker and word tracker um, goals and proficiencies as well. Okay, go back to the beginning. Activities index. Most of you are probably familiar with the activities section, uh, families, singles, youth, children, and so forth. One thing that we've added that's new is an index. This is an overall index for all of the activities pages. So I click on the index. You can see this is somewhat reminiscent of the topics page in the Family History Guide, but it's all directed towards um, activities. So S means singles, F is family, Y is youth, and so forth. So hmm, this looks interesting, cemeteries and smartphones. Immediately you find what you're looking for. So it's just another way um, to help people find the information they need when they're looking into activities that they want to try out. 
Another thing we added for activities is a tracker. And this is a little bit different in its approach. So I'm going to click the tracker here. And you notice that it downloaded uh, in the lower left of my screen a Word doc, kind of like the, the Word tracker files. I'm going to open that up. And of course, I have to expand this a little bit here. And the difference that you'll see here compared to regular trackers is we don't have a proficiency level on an activity. So instead of saying not started, good, proficient, that type of thing, basically it has a rating system. Um, when your family tried this activity, did you love it? Was it good? Or did it turn out not so great for us? Um, and you can put in notes there and the dates and so forth. So this is basically a way to keep track of what activities you've tried, um, ways that you could enhance them, or if an activity just didn't work out so well for your, for your family, you'll know that you can move on to another one. So I'll close that up. Go back to the home page. Okay, um, let's move over to blog format. Uh, we've had the blog going since last September, I think, but we've improved the format and the layout and I think uh, it's more effective. We have a two column format here and there are basically 10 blog posts per page. And we can see we've got about 11 pages. So this is over 100 uh, blogs that we've done in the meantime. And you're welcome to subscribe here on the right hand side to the Family History Guide blog. We come out with a new uh, grouping. We'll send out to your email every Monday morning and there's tags that you can find and search for um, blog posts that we've done. All right, let's move over to number 11, the YouTube channel. This is fairly new. We've had the YouTube channel for a while, but we just had one or two videos. And so now we've expanded that and we'll be adding more. It's under blog social. We go down to YouTube and I'm going to click on videos here. And you can see a list of the videos we currently have. Um, if a video is religious or LDS in focus, then that's indicated in parentheses there. And the newest ones are listed first um, down to the oldest ones. Just an interesting note, you see this Clarabelle in the Mormon Tabernacle organ. Um, we had this video posted and then the, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir blog saw it and decided to do a feature on it uh, using our video. And so you can see that the hits uh, really went up um, from the extra exposure from the Mormon Tabernacle Choir blog. So that was kind of cool. One of the purposes of doing YouTube, of course, is to expand our reach, uh, to get more, more people interested. So if you haven't taken the time, please go through and uh, check out some of these videos. Very inspirational. Some are more inspirational and some are more instructional on teaching you certain features of the Family History Guide. All right, continuing in the social media area, we'll go down to Twitter. And Bonnie Matson, our social media coordinator, has done a terrific job with putting together this Twitter page, um, managing the tweets, posts, and so forth. Um, so you can go through there and, and get a, an idea of what's been going on in the Twitter sphere. Um, she also helped put together, I'll go back here, uh, our Pinterest page. So if you're into Pinterest and sharing photos and um, pins and groups and things like that, um, there's lots of extra material that you can find about the Family History Guide and general boards of, of interest that you might be thinking about. So highly recommend that as well. All right, that takes us uh, to number 15, uh, inline quick links. <clears throat> so you're probably familiar with quick links. They take you directly to record search screens uh, faster and easier and so forth. One of the things that we had going for our record quick links was we tended to accumulate them kind of in one large bucket. For example, if you were in a country like England, um, you would look on the left hand side or at the bottom and you'd find uh, a large quantity of quick links. While that's okay, we thought, you know, there's a better way to do that. So we converted a lot of these uh, quick links to what we call inline quick links, meaning that they are located right where you need them 
in line where we're talking about the particular topic or subject. I'll give you a demonstration of that. We'll go to countries and then we'll go to England. Here's the England page. I'm going to go to vital records. That's goal number two. And we're learning about British and Welsh vital records, birth and marriage records, and so forth. You watch the videos, read the articles, and so forth. And then at the end of that particular goal, you have the collection of quick links that apply to that particular topic. So, family search births and christenings. Okay, I'll give that a try. There you go. Let's try find my past Boyd's marriage indexes. Very easy. Uh, Ancestry.com free BMD death index. So you'll see that these are located in the different countries, including the United States, right in the area of focus, which makes it uh, a lot better to integrate your learning experience and get you searching for things faster uh, right where you need them. Okay, that's a look at inline quick links. There are many, many of them um, scattered across uh, the different countries uh, and uh, state pages, United States pages as well. Let's go to number 16, Australia states. So I'm going to go to countries and I'm going to go to Asia Pacific. And here's Australia. And just by background, to this point, the countries that have had um, extra pages beneath them or included in them are the United States for the 50 state pages, uh, England for 36 county pages, and Canada for 10 province pages. And now we've added six um, state pages for Australia. You'll see them located right down here near the bottom below the picture. And I can click New South Wales and... I get the New South Wales page with the goals, choices, steps, and so forth. And you'll even see some quick links embedded in there where you need them. So that's been very popular for the Australian users or anyone who has Australian ancestry as well. That was number 16. Let's go on to number 17, um, the vault menus. I'm going to go over here to the side. And before... Uh, when you would hover over vault, there was just a main page link, and that was pretty much it. And now we've added quite a few more categories to the drop-down menu, so you can get places inside the vault page um, a lot faster. So, for, insta for instance, if I'm interested in U.S. vital records, the types of things where I could find extra articles and videos and so forth, I could just go down and select U.S. vital, and there I am. Remember with the uh, vault page, there is a topics link, very important. You can actually use this as a shortcut method of getting pretty much anywhere you need to go. Um, United States naturalization records. Uh, let's go to Spain, Netherlands. I mean, it's very easy to find the types, uh, the categories for vault um, articles and videos that you're interested in. And the drop-down menu just makes it that much easier to work with as well. Okay, that's number 17. I'll move on to number 18, online tracker. And near the right-hand side, um, the online tracker previously was pretty much focused around the family search projects. You had uh, eight different projects you had Family Tree, Memories, Descendants, um, Discover, which is research, uh, indexing, help, technology, uh, DNA. Well, now we've expanded those to include not only Family Search, but the other partners, such as Ancestry, My Heritage, and Find My Past, as well as Countries. So I happen to already be logged in to the online tracker, but this gives you a look at how many more projects you can track uh, in the online tracker for the Family History Guide. Here's all of the Ancestry projects, My Heritage, Find My Past, as well as Country Research. So you could uh, click any one of these and move your slider bars and suddenly I'm proficient. Of course, I trust that I've actually gone through the exercises uh, to attain that proficiency. 
but just a very easy way to keep yourself um, on track and so forth. And you get the date of update. Uh, when you leave the screen and come back, it records date of update. So that's basically the online tracker. If you don't have an account, you should go out and, um, and check out registering. Uh, you could provide your email or a username, sign up for a free account. This is the only part of the family history guide that actually requires a login and an account because we store your information in a secure online database and for that we need an online account. All right, so that's uh, number 18. Oh, and of course, we've got all sorts of countries here, Austrian research and lots to discover. Okay, uh, number 19, features help. Let's go up to the top. Features help is all the way over on the miscellaneous menu. It's the second one down, so I'll click that. And I think this is one of the more... Um, unknown features, um, undersold, let's say, not that well known, but I think it's very useful. So in features help, you'll see some feature categories up here, but I'll just take you through and scroll down a bit. Activities. So basically what the uh, features help does is it gives you, uh, for, for a beginner, it explains, okay, how do I use this particular feature? which is good, but if you're more experienced, it also has some tips um, that can help more advanced users as well. So it's basically kind of hybrid. It helps the beginner uh, get familiar with what the feature is, and it provides some tips for the more experienced user and using the activity or the, uh, the feature rather in ways that can be beneficial. Finding a location. U.S. counties, all sorts of little trivia things that you might not know are um, trapped and recorded in these uh, tips and feature help. Languages. Did you know where the art article translations are and the video translations? This gives you a good clue. How to navigate, all the tips and tricks for doing that. So highly recommend that either for yourself or if there's someone you're training or coaching um, that would like an overview of what you can do with the Family History Guide, this is a good page as well. Okay, so that, that takes us through what's actually current in the Family History Guide. And now I'll, I will go on a small limb <laughs> and show you something um, that we are working on. You'll notice number 20 here is in italics, and the reason for that is that it is still being worked on. So this is not officially re released yet, but I'll give you a picture of what it looks like. So before in, in the Family History Ad, well, I can actually take you over there. I'll go Intro here and Computer Basics. And basically what you have is pretty much a list of links that you can go out and explore. And while that's helpful, we thought that it would, it would probably be a better user experience and more helpful if we can break down these basic um, articles and concepts into goals and projects. So with a little bit of thought, that actually is coming to pass, and we think it's a kind of a cooler way to get you through um, the beginning information. So computer basics page, you'll see there are PC projects and Mac projects. So if I go up to top I'll click PC basics here and you've got hmm, windows and navigation internet basic internet skills and so forth um, I'll go back to computer basics I'm, I'm walking through this obviously very fast and some of the content is obviously not finished yet Mac basics uh, Gmail and, and Google applications um, Gmail and Google applications PC application skills, Mac application skills, and social media skills. And back we go. So that is a look at what's new and what's been changing in the Family History Guide over the last uh, three or four months. Um, 
we love working with the Family History Guide Association. Uh, we feel the best is yet to come and we're excited about the support that we have gotten. Um, I might mention that we have probably close to 50 or 60 um, regional trainers who have volunteered um, to help with training efforts um, out in the across the United States and even in, in several different countries. So we're in the midst of uh, organizing a, a huge training effort um, that will help the Family History Guide grow. Thanks for your support and uh, stay in touch. Go visit the Family History Guide, thefhguide.com. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Um, as of right now, we don't have any questions for you. Um, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to just type those in. There is a questions box on this closing page as well. Um, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, BYU Family History Library, and we also have a Twitter and Facebook account. Um, we upload all of our webinars as recordings onto our YouTube channel, so make sure you get a chance to go on and watch this again and watch all of the other ones that we have. Um, okay, so there are a couple questions, Bob. So Cindy said that she looked away for a second and doesn't remember how you got to features. Um, No, you'll have to okay. share it again. Go uh, ahead. And... Is my screen still sharing? Oh, okay. Um, not, not a worry, though, but uh, let's see if I can share my screen really quick. Uh... Oh, it looks like Bob closed out of his... <laughs> his screen on accident. Um, but Cindy, just to answer your question, we will be posting this webinar online um, onto our YouTube channel within the next coming days so you can um, you can go through and, and watch it again and get everything all dialed. And we know that a lot of times live these things go really fast and you miss a couple things so that's why we provide the uh, recorded version for everyone as well. Um, And then, Jim, you submitted the question, how can we become a trainer? Um, and I think, let's see here. I'm going to bring up the chat pod because I think if somebody else might know how to answer these better than me. So we'll just move this chat box into this page. So everybody, if anybody else knows how to answer that, because Bob accidentally closed out of his window, so I can't answer so we have yeah so I can't answer those very well anyways we'd like to thank everybody for joining us today um, just one quick reminder our YouTube channel you can get to that um, by just googling BYU Family History Library YouTube channel and it'll come up um, and that's where you'll find all of our recorded videos. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And if you take, can take a second before you leave to just fill out some feedback, let us know what you thought about today's webinar, what we can do to improve our webinar series, um, and any topics you'd like to hear about in the future would always be really appreciated. Thank you very much.